You are the Lord of Dwarves. Time to fulfill your dream of managing an entire colony of dwarves. This game was in early access for about a year, and now it's out. It has all the elements of a simulation game. You know, the endless tasks that suck you in so hard it's impossible to put down. There's so much to do and manage. I spent a good amount of time with it, and I'm excited to share my thoughts with you. You'll start by playing the campaign mode, since that acts as a good introduction to the game. It has some small story preamble, which gets out of the way quickly. Then you're given a set of tasks that walk you through the interface, feeding dwarves, building, mining, and really all the things. While being shown every little step seems like it would be tiresome, it's actually quite useful. I needed to be shown where everything is in the interface, since it's a little complicated. Also, the game is smart, and if you've jumped ahead, it will allow you to keep going and it won't force you to redo a step you've already done. Even after all my time playing, I still haven't finished the campaign. My time does include some goofing off and a few restarts because I was being dumb. If learning about the game from playing isn't your thing, which is a little weird, then you can still use the Dwarfopedia accessible in the game. Lord of Dwarves has other modes like Challenge. It's another place you can accomplish a goal that the game sets out for you. For example, kill one big enemy that's going to arrive in summer. Another example, your dwarves are stuck underground with a ton of monsters above. You'll need to build up your forces and take them all out. <laughs> that one sounds intense. These are more goal-oriented with starting presets that make them more or less challenging. The game has 21 challenges broken up by easy, medium, and hard. There's something for everyone. There's also a sandbox mode, which is exactly what you expect. The game offers a ton of customization options to set up the game the way you want. They have a lot more options than I expected, especially the option that allows you to plan a big assault on your dwarves. I prefer the more challenge-oriented game modes, but a sandbox mode is always great. Moving on to dwarf management, which mostly revolves around the building. To start, you'll want to get the basics up and running, food, water, and some simple workshops. You'll need many materials, so order your dwarves to clear out the trees, stone, and food. The buildings are easy to grasp and tiered, so you need one to get to another. For example, you must build a basic wood shop before building a carpentry workshop. I like how the game shows you exactly what's missing for construction. If you hover over the location, the materials in red are the ones that are missing. I like planning where the buildings are going to go and then crafting the requirements. You'll also want to start planning your storage areas. While you can place everything on the ground, I recommend crafting some cupboards, bins, and log racks. They allow one square to hold more materials and now all your stuff isn't lying all over the ground like a savage. Eventually, you'll want to manage your dwarf's professions. You'll need mostly laborers and craftsmen to start. Then, later on, you'll add more specific jobs for the dwarves. The system is done really well. You can see all the dwarves in a list with their jobs and skill levels. It makes it easy to change their professions. Seeing the totals for each job would be nice, though. As the list gets longer, it gets a little more difficult to track the jobs. Now, so far, we've only talked about things that are happening above ground, but that's not going to get you very far. You must dig. After all, it's a dwarf's job to hollow out the earth. You'll find stronger metals and more stone down there. You can also expect to find enemies. Keeping your mind well lit is important, it's a little weird, but the game will let you hollow out everything, which removes the floor. For example, if you mine out level 1 and 2, it will now be a much larger open area. That's all one big level 0 room now. I've been going down to a specific level and mining it out and then skipping a few more levels to find a new section of the mine. 
you'll find small open pockets, or some people call them caves, that can span a few levels too. You don't have to worry about it too much because the dwarves are fairly good climbers. You'll need better metals like iron for new weapons and armor, but you'll also need all that stone to craft walls. Building walls is simple, but you have to be careful when selecting the material. Worked stone can be made from a few different kinds of stone, and if you place your wall using one kind, and then the dwarves create a different kind, you're going to have to go back through and replace it all. Extremely tedious. Although I do like that if you break apart the worked stone wall, it gives you back the worked stone instead of breaking apart the stone and giving you back just stone. It's very polite of the game. One surprising thing about Lord of Dwarves is the scaffolding. Now, it's by far the most boring thing I see all the time. Living and working in a city has advantages, and scaffolding isn't one of them. It's endless. But I never expected to see it here. I don't think the developer needed to include it, but I, I kind of love it. The dwarves will set up scaffolding themselves when building high walls. They'll even use it underground to reach the higher up blocks you want to mine. They do place it in the most inefficient way possible, and I've had one layer of scaffolding across my all entire wall right at the base, which isn't helping anybody. Still, it's nice that you don't have to worry about it. Always build more than you think you need, because you're the one that has to clean it all up. It sure would be nice if the dwarves cleaned up after themselves and tore down all the messy scaffolding they placed. Either way, it's a great feature. Anyway, the combat of Lord of Dwarves is a bit cumbersome. I like that you have to specify a safe zone for your civilians to flee to if there's an enemy. At least that puts them close to your guard. However, your dwarves guard the guard post a little too well. If they're stationed to a guard post, they might not come over and help save your civilians. The enemies need to be pretty close. They don't keep a guard rotation either. I've had dwarves pass out asleep on their post or go home to sleep, which isn't helpful if you're trying to defend. One mistake can cost you 10 to 15 civilians, which really hurts. Also, if you want them to attack a specific location, you need to place an attack zone. But if you need them to attack a different location after that, you'll need to delete the previous zone and create a new one. Enemies can slip by easily and the guards won't give chase. It really makes me wish for RTS controls where I could group them up and micro them myself. A stutter step on archers would be incredible, instead of them standing there tanking hits, which is suboptimal. Moving on to the interface, which is, in my opinion, is, isn't great. It might be my screen resolution, but it's far too small. I wish there was some way to change the size. The layout isn't bad, though, and I like how you can move each window independently. Sadly, they're a fixed size, and when dwarf population rises, a scroll bar is added. Side note, the game does have amazing camera shortcuts. It's not explained in the campaign, which blows my mind, but if you press shift and a number key, that key will take your camera back to that spot. These are incredibly handy to switch between above, ground, and below. Being able to switch back to the same view all the time makes getting your bearings a lot easier too. I feel like I can't escape comparing Lord of Dwarves to the gold standard of dwarf games, Dwarf Fortress. No game will ever compare to the monumental history and crazy complexity that is Dwarf Fortress. So there's no comparison I can make here. In my opinion, they're for different audiences. Overall, Lord of Dwarves is a fun simulation that you can get lost in. It has depth, allows for creativity, and I like the focus on objectives. The UI could be a bit better, and the graphics aren't much to look at. Still, it's one of the more competent dwarf simulations I've played, and I had fun. Thank you, thank you. Lord of Dwarves was simulating, but what should I play next? 
Thank you very much for watching. And since you've watched this far, you will hit subscribe.